This episode of Six Five Guys is brought to you by Defiance Machine, defying tradition with innovation. Our Bros Rifles, precision on another level. JC Steel Targets, the industry leader in quality AR500 steel targets. Welcome to another episode of Six Five Guys. I'm Steve Lawrence. And I'm Ed Mobling. For this episode, we're doing a follow-up to additional brass testing. In this case, the Alpha Munitions 6.5 Creedmoor Brass. And this is actually the way it arrives to the consumer in a very nice reusable case. Yep. And it's not just show, they explained to us that uh, by packaging it like this, you're not gonna have any ding necks. Ding necks. Yeah, so yeah. It's that, that's, that's a, a very thoughtful addition. Absolutely, now one of the claims to fame that Alpha Munitions has is they're bringing a lot of processes and technology and methodology around the medical device manufacturing processes and applying it to the production of brass to achieve very consistent case-to-case uh, -case consistency. So exactly, you'll actually put it to the test and see what we have. Yeah, I mean they, I mean they manufacture brass in just a, a completely different way, and it also gives them a lot of flexibility as far as creating custom cartridges. I mean they even told us that uh, it would just be a, a 45 minute uh, change out to make a cartridge in small primer versus large mm -hmm. primer. So we'll see if that <laughs> comes in the future. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, I mean this is this is uh, seems like a, a, a pretty exciting company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, what comes out of today's testing. So we started off with a box of 100 cases. These retail for $99 per box on their website. And similar to the Lapua test, we selected 31 cases randomly to take a number of measurements. We measured the weight and the shoulder, uh, the base to shoulder data, overall length, as well as neck runout. So here we are testing the weight, again, using the Charge Master from RCBS. And I could not do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you'll see here is a pretty wide spectrum of weights. Again, um, look, the Alpha Munitions does not sort their brass by weight. Um, they told us they're much more concerned around internal case volume, which um, for this test, we were not able to uh, measure. Yeah, they use the same piece of tooling touches the inside of every case, and that's the real differentiator. Mm -hmm. So um, while there might be more weight variation, you're going to get rock solid capacity. And again, here's the measurement uh, based to data. Again, this looked uh, you know similar to a bell-shaped curve. Which is good. In fact, I think this compares very favorably to uh, some of the measurements we got from the Lapua brass. And here we are measuring the overall length, just uh, using a standard uh, pair of calipers. So uh, with all these numbers, it was kind of meticulous getting these entered into an Excel spreadsheet. Here, you know, we see a little bit more um, of a distribution uh, with, you know, nodes at 1.912 inches and 1.913. But, you know, when you trim them, they're, they're going to be pretty, become, pretty. Yeah, they'll be very consistent. Again, here we are using the Sinclair tool to measure the neck run out. Now, it's interesting um, with the neck and just kind of loading these, you would explain to me, because you were really doing the reloads for these tests, that um, it seemed to be pretty thick brass, pretty pretty. Medium. Oh, yeah, and we, we saw, too, when we loaded it, that for a given load, it produces a lot more velocity. So this is really thick, stout brass. Again, the, the neck run out here, um, 
You had a little bit more of a variance um, as compared to what we saw with Lapua. And then we got into our longevity testing, just taking a single case and subjecting it to multiple relay loads to see how many times we could actually reload it before the brass wore out. Yeah, and we had to back down quite a bit on the on the reload because using the, the same load as the Lapua brass, we got dramatically higher velocities. So it, it would appear that the internal volume of this brass is somewhat less than the Lapua brass, which goes to show when you change brass, you, you, you have to, to work up a new evaluate load. Yeah. your reloads. So again, uh, same procedure over and over, you know, reloading the brass with the charge in a bullet and then test firing it. Um, after each test fire, we would analyze the case for any pressure signs and include uh, testing how uh, the primer is getting seated if it was starting to feel right. loose. And, and, and we expected that the any case with a large rifle primer, the primer pockets were going to shoot looser sooner. And uh, as you'll see, that, that's what happened here. Now, what we had heard anecdotally was, um, you know, a lot of folks shooting the 6.5 Creedmoor um, with other brands um, have been getting you know, in the range of 78 reloads. Uh, we easily surpassed that. Um, here we're on reload 12. And we started to see some signs of the Pyro Pocket fairly easy to seat. Right, yeah, just after the 10th reload. So when compared to other large primer pocket brass, the alpha brass is definitely stouter. You'll get more reloads, but you're not going to get as many reloads as you would uh, a, a small rifle primer pocket brass. But they, who knows, they may offer this brass in small primer pocket. Yeah, I mean, that's one piece of feedback I'm looking with that my we would borescope. offer to yeah, yeah. Alpha Munitions is um, take a look at perhaps offering this with small primer pockets yeah. at some point in the future. And so earlier there, I was looking with my borescope to look for a case head separation. Didn't didn't see anything like that. But we're only pushing the shoulder back a foul, so I wouldn't have expected that to happen. But here um, we're at um, 12 reloads and uh, going for the 13th, and again, you know, we're going to see a new primer and test how firmly it actually is holding within the primer pocket. Yeah, I mean, my first indicator was how easily they seated, but then, as you can see right here, I could just push them out. So the what we found here was um, for this brass 2872 of muzzle velocity, uh, we got about 12 reloads out of it before the primer pockets were worn out. And again, this was a pretty hot load. And here we decided to do a hot load test and then take a look at the brass. And there's the case right there. I mean, still still looking pretty good. Again, the, the life limit of that particular case was the, the primer pocket started coming a little loose. So overall, you know, they, they do offer very innovative manufacturing and packaging very nice packaging and yeah it's definitely a, a heavy heavy duty case and you will get more life than uh, probably what you have been using in the last couple of years and pricing very very competitive made in the u.s as well yeah although from a consistency standpoint there's probably a, a bit of a gap to close versus lapool and availability may be spotty well, Steve, I mean, that was uh, very enjoyable, and it was great to uh, collect data. It was. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's good to come out here to your uh, facility out here in uh, the rural part of western Washington to do this testing. Guys, we hope that you enjoyed uh, this episode. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of the information from today's testing will be up on our website. So go check that out if you're looking for a lot of the information around the measurements and what came out of today's testing. Well, hopefully you'll find this uh, information useful. Remember folks, life's an adventure. Stay on target.